Okay, so now we will do some smelling together for this kitchen cabinet smell session. Uh, make sure that you grab your peanut butter, peanut butter, and your eucalyptus or um, yeah, your Vicks vapor rub. You can have either one. So, and then Cara will lead you through your smelling experience. Um, so uh, yeah, so I know that you first became interested in, in smell and art due to experiencing an olfactory artwork at the Venice Biennale some years ago. And can, so can you explain uh, quickly what olfactory art is and tell us about maybe your first encounter with it? Yes. Uh, also, when it comes to olfactory art, there are different, different definitions that I all respect. And um, the definition that I use is the definition, well, within autonomous art, within visual art, visual between brackets, when artists use, intentionally use the sense of smell, and when without that smell, the work of art would lose meaning or uh, would have uh, a different effect. That's what I call olfactory art. And the first olfactory artwork that I smelled was We Fishing the Time by Ernesto Neto. And I was still a student. I had never heard of olfactory art. I had never smelled an artwork. And I walked in the Venice Biennale, smelled something very spicy, very strong. And I thought, oh no, why am I smelling the kitchen? I'm supposed to enjoy art. This is so disturbing, my aesthetic gaze and then I realized only hundreds of meters ahead when I saw the work of art consisting of lots of spices and lycra bags and then I realized okay this smell is part of an artwork so smell can actually be art um, and then I started studying other examples of um, contemporary olfactory art and then later I found out that the futurists who worked from 1909 until 1942 used so often addressed the sense of smell in their performances, artworks, uh, poetry readings, um, theater, cinema, um, that I also started researching lost smells. Uh, now olfactory art, one of the most famous Dutch olfactory artworks, only Dutch people know him, I think, is by Wim de Schippers. And he, in the 1960s, decided, just like that, to create a peanut butter floor. So the entire floor in the museum, Centraal Museum Utrecht, it was, was covered with peanut butter. Of course, defying all kinds of unwritten rules. It should be clean, it should be clinical, it should be a white cube in a, uh, in a museum. He defied that. And people started playing around with it, starting rolling around in it naked, uh, throwing um, uh, sandwiches in there. Um, so it was so, so much fun. And when I talk about this work of art, especially during COVID or online, I ask people to grab a jar of peanut butter to experience it, not just by seeing an image, digital image, but by smelling it. So open your... Open your jar. I think American peanut butter is a bit different, right, from Dutch peanut butter. Uh, well, I, I don't know. I always buy a hundred percent peanut butter uh, because I yeah. like I like like the real peanut buttery peanut butter. <laughs> yeah. But I don't know. Um, it would be interesting to know uh, which kind of peanut butter was used during yes, like, at the yeah. peanut butter platform. Do you know? I know, yeah, he used Calvé. I think he used Calvé. Yeah, this one. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> is, is it, does it have, uh, is it sweeter or, because mine, yeah, mine smells like, for, like peanuts. It's very creamy. Mm. So I'm afraid it contains palm oil. Mm. Yeah, yeah. it does contain palm oil. So I would recommend uh, other types of peanut butter. This is my documentary jar of peanut butter. Um, <clears throat> and what happens then is that uh, all the listeners right now, all the students that smell simultaneously are in the same olfactory space. 
and they can better imagine being in the museum where this peanut butter floor was installed. And to be real rebels, I even invite people. Did you bring your spoon, Sophia? <laughs> no, I didn't. <laughs> but I maybe I can use my finger. Your hands. Yeah, use your finger. <laughs> okay. To I, I will also use my finger then. Be a rebel and <laughs> have some peanut butter as if you're vandalizing this work of art. The artist would approve of it because he enjoys a bit of craziness. Mm. If you would actually do it, you would get a fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and uh, it's it's not the easiest thing to eat. No. <laughs> Quite fun, right? That you're like, then got this sticky uh, feeling in your mouth. Um, oh, and I, yeah. And I remember when you explained this uh, work in your kitchen cabinet smell sessions before, you've talked about how the smell of the peanut butter uh, yeah went through the entire museum space. So even if you weren't in the room where the peanut butter floor was, it was still, you would still smell it in a different room. It took over the entire museum. And I don't think the staff expected this. And when I saw it um, in the night, in no, in 2000 and let's say 15 in Rotterdam, it was installed again. And then they had uh, double doors and ventilation system. Um, so that it wouldn't disperse throughout the entire museum. And I think that's uh, because, of course, some people are allergic to peanuts. And yeah. I heard that people who only inhaled the air already had some uh, starting yeah. initial allergic reaction. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we need to. That's a, that's a difficulty with, with peanut butter, right? Uh, that a lot of people are very, very allergic even to just the, the smell of it. Um, yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. So that was, that was fun. That was our first, our first smell session. We got to stick our fingers in peanut butter, which is always <laughs> a nice <laughs> sensation. We're activating all of our senses today. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so we're touching. Yeah. Smelling. Um,